The jersey is an important aspect of the hockey uniform. The jersey that you wear on your chest represents the connection between the athlete and the city that they play for. I mean, 90% of my wardrobe consists of hockey jerseys, so I think that we should talk about the history that hockey jerseys carry behind them. The term hockey sweater is derived from the fact that most players were wearing a simple sweater to games. A lot of the time coordinating colors didn't matter and teams would wear whatever style sweater they saw fit. There is some debate as to which league first started using numbers on their jersey, the PCHA or the NHL's predecessor, the NHA. The NHA required players to have a number on their arm to help represent each player. The PCHA would put numbers on players' backs to help sell their programs at the beginning of each game, allowing fans to tell which player are which number. Most early jerseys had patterns to them, whether it be a barber pole stripe or solid colors. For the most part, the league didn't mandate what kind of jerseys the team was supposed to wear, which in a lot of cases caused confusion. As hockey games were put on television, the way jerseys looked changed for the better. In the 1950s, the NHL made contrasting jersey colors mandatory, resulting in home teams wearing bright colors and the away team wearing dark colors. For the longest time, jerseys remained pretty basic. From 1942 to 1967, Jerseys were either red, blue, black, gold, or white. Again, at this point they were all wearing stylized sweaters, but in the 1960s came the NHL expansion, and along with that came more additions to the jersey color rainbow. With the addition of six new teams, jerseys took on a new look. The Los Angeles Kings wore purple, the Philadelphia Flyers brought back orange, and the California Golden Steels plus the Minnesota North Stars took to the ice wearing green. This time also brought on more synthetic materials to jerseys like polyester, but still had some older aspects like a more lightweight cotton. The 70s brought in jerseys with more flair and designed to represent each team more. The Washington Capitals added stars to their jerseys to represent the American feel the team has, while the Canucks spent $100,000 to marketing firm Bale, Boyd, and Turner to redesign their jerseys. They came up with the V design, which represents the word victory, not Vancouver. The 70s also had players putting their names on their backs to help determine which player is which. Until 1977, home teams could wear their names at their own liking. Starting with the 1977-78 season, names would be mandatory on all jerseys. Starting in 1995, some teams began to design a third jersey or alternate jersey, which would allow them to experiment with a new design or a throwback to a vintage sweater. Prior to 2000, different NHL teams had contracts with different manufacturers for their jerseys. Manufacturers include CCM, Coho, Nike, Starter, and Pro Player. From the 2000 to 2001 season up to the 2005-2006 NHL season, all team sweaters were made by the hockey company in an NHL-wide deal. Following Reebok's purchase of the hockey company, all official NHL team sweaters were switched to the Reebok design. The NHL would commission Reebok to create a lighter, more breathable jersey design. After two years of research and development, they introduced the Reebok Edge jersey design in 2007. It was intended to make players more maneuverable on the ice. The Edge uniform system lasted 10 seasons until Adidas took over the manufacturing of NHL jerseys and introduced the Adi Zero uniform system. Adidas kept the basic silhouette intact and introduced a few changes to the jersey construction. As time goes on, aspects of the hockey jersey will always be changing. I mean, the style that a decade carries with it is always going to be updated, and it's always going to be changing in some way, which in a lot of ways impacts hockey. I mean, if you think about it, at one point it was relevant to have stripes on your jersey, then it was relevant to have a superhero duck on your jersey, and now we're at a more tame time in hockey jersey design. But keep your eyes peeled, you never know what the hockey gods will bring. Anyways, thank you so much for watching the video. Be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe for future videos. The research behind these videos does take a while, so to keep up to date, check out my Instagram and Twitter. I've been posting a lot more content on there, so if you're enjoying this hockey stuff, be sure to check me out on there. Anyways, I'll see you guys when I see you guys.